Nate, did you not shave again? That's why we can't see you. Oh, I'll, I'll get it going in a second. I didn't shave though, no. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I wanted to tell you if you ever get some sort of weird email from me that doesn't make sense, it's because my son's name is also Ben and the computer automatically uh, fills in the last email for the last Ben I wrote to. Gotcha. So just either ignore it or let me know you were the wrong Ben. Uh, okay, gotcha. That sounds good. We, you chose a good name for your son. <laughs> and Nate appears. I think so. Ma it's magic. Hi, Nate. <laughs> I hope we'll see you soon, Robin. But I'm I trying. <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, so well, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. on Wednesday, August 26th. And um, first we have um, announcements. Um, okay, and, wanna, should we just do a roll call attendance? Just oh, so of course, I'm sorry. Yes, of attendance. course. Yes, okay, roll call attendance. Um, so let's, uh, let's begin with Pat Hoff. Present. Um, Robin Fordham. Present. Jane Marquardt. Jane. You can <laughs> call me Jan. I'm sorry, yeah. I don't know how to change it on there. Here, I'll sorry. change it for you. <laughs> okay. I need to do it permanently because I was in a class and everyone was calling me Jane and I realized I don't use that outside of home so or France. So. Yeah. Uh, Jane Scheffler. Here. There you are. Okay. Ready startup? Yeah. And Jane Wald, I'm here too. Okay. So this is being, uh, this is uh, a meeting happening by Zoom because of uh, the prohibition on um, in-person meetings. Um, if there are members of the public who want to join us, uh, if you're not already here, then you can't see the link on the on the screen, uh, but you can go to the town website to the calendar and pick up the link there. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be a public comment period toward the end of the agenda, and at that time we'll entertain comments from members of the public. Uh, uh, but members of the commission uh, may not <coughs> need to respond uh, to, to comments. Um, anyone who wants to make a comment should uh, raise their hand, and they'll signal their presence, and they'll have uh, roughly three minutes to speak. So we can begin with announcements. And um, I don't know, Nate, if there is a, a, a if, if the writer's walk qualifies as an announcement. Sure, we'll make it an announcement. <laughs> Uh, so Anthony did uh, put the quotes out for, um, you know, we, have, we developed a spec sheet and we um, have to solicit three quotes and he's done that and they're due September 3rd. So, which is a good thing because, uh, you know, the, the money's been sitting out there a while and the CPA committee is meeting again soon for the next round. So, you know, hopefully by uh, mid-September, we'll have some, a firm under contract to fabricate the signs. Wait, wait a minute. Are you telling me the bids went out for the writer's walk signs? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like That's it. the first part of that. I didn't click. Wow. So something I did worked or it didn't matter? And after the last meeting, I sent an email to the town manager's office and his supervisor. And I said, we really need to move this along. Great. Yeah. So thanks everyone. Yeah, no, Jen, I think, I think the pressure helped to move, you know, I, Anthony has so many projects he's doing and so you know I think sometimes it's he ha he doesn't know how to prioritize right I mean who tells him to prioritize projects but I think us pushing him enough made him realize it was a priority so great super thank you for following up I know yeah. I reminded you a lot you're probably sick of seeing my emails but hey whatever works no I'm, I'm glad it's, I'm excited for it to happen you know <laughs> it's good news absolutely good news Yes, a long time in coming, and I'll bring the champagne. It's not not quite here, but yeah, let's right. let's start stocking up. <laughs> Forget <laughs> toilet paper, just do champagne. <laughs> and the other announcement is the um, I just learned uh, just this week that 
the CPA proposals will be due in mid-October instead of uh, December this year. So the CPA process has been moved forward to align with the new kind of budget cycle with town council. So, uh, you know, staff just talked about it the last day or two. And, you know, I think the commission could think of what, you know, what you'd like to propose or, you know, we might have to reach out to other organizations, you know, just like we normally do. And I'm not sure the CPA committee's made that announcement yet, but. Um, the I think forms will be online <clears throat> once it is ready to go. It, it, wants it, it should be online once it's ready to go. Okay, um, I just know but, people who are thinking about it. But, and I think for the historical commission, you know, staff had said, uh, you know, we've mentioned that the cemeteries have been getting a lot of attention. So, or I, I should say, I don't know if it's negative attention, but, you know, this summer we received a number of calls about the landscape in West Cemetery, you know, not being mowed or the condition of the headstones in both, um, well, in North and South Cemetery and West Cemetery. So the, the Historical Commission has um, money for headstone restoration in West Cemetery, but hasn't ever requested money for North or South Cemetery. So staff thought that could be a request. Um, DPW also wants to finish the fence in West Cemetery. So, you know, we, um, gosh, it's probably like 10 years ago, we put in the town, um, you know, put the faux wrought iron fence for around most of West Cemetery, but the south and east boundary was never finished. It's still a chain link fence. And so um, last year they worked, they, they um, you know, asked for quotes from a fence company. And so that's something that could be brought forward. But, you know, it's just for the commission to consider. There is a few outstanding projects in CPA, but we were thinking if we, you know, bundled cemeteries as, as a, as something, you know, it, you know, as a, as a one project. So even if there's many pieces to projects, we'd say, you know, you know, they bring in tourists, there's families there. It's, you know, there's a number of reasons why we could call cemeteries as one project and have a few things going, but it's just a consideration. We don't, you know, it's not on the agenda for tonight, but for next meeting, we could talk about it. So I just wanted to announce that the CPA is, we do sooner this year and we could come up with projects. If we did a cemetery request, could we put in um, money for the sheep? Yeah, so I think we could. I think we, you know, my thought would be, um, we had return money in West Cemetery. We had some money for the landscaping. We had money for the African-American section that had been returned for lighting that had been returned just because they never, you know, they were made and, you know, we were kind of bankrolling and they never, you know, I don't think there's ever any idea of how much work it would take, but you know, Ben and I even talked about we could do um, request money to come up with a new landscape plan or a site plan for West Cemetery. So I don't know if it was Martha Lyons or um, Denig Design did the West Cemetery plan, but it's it's dated now. So there could be a request for some money just to have someone help with the overall site plan and design for West Cemetery. Um, Dan, thank you for bringing up the sheep because I actually have been thinking about that. Um, and the young man that I spoke to who was very enthusiastic about willing to help us but but in order to do that process we need to have them come and take a look at the site and mm -hmm. see what's growing there and I don't have any kind of a bid from him I don't know because he, he was going to come in the spring and with COVID everything just came to a screeching halt so I need some guidance as to how to involve him maybe before the fall, if we wanted to get a, a input from him, whether he thinks he can, it's right place for his sheep and what it would cost. Yeah, Pat, I think if you have an, e an email, you could copy Ben and myself on an email and we could do a site visit there and you okay. can take a look. Yeah, I mean, my thought would be, if we think, the, if we like the idea of kind of bundling things for West Cemetery or the cemeteries, we could list a number of things that would be included in the funding, whether it's you know, even if we needed to hire a landscape company for a weekend to pull all the woody shrubs that have grown up around the headstone. So the sheep may help with grasses and they may help defoliate things, but I think at some point we actually actually need to physically manually remove some of the tr shrubs and trees that are growing. So, you know, even if we said, okay, you know, we could call Taylor Davis and say, how much is, would it cost? And, you know, maybe we, that, that becomes part of the request. And so, you know, just, I, I, I don't have any answers. I'm just, you know, I think it's something we can have on the agenda for next meeting and come up with ideas. 
But well, if we could get a bid from the sheep guy, that would right. be great. Yeah. I, I will be in touch with him because I, I we left it hanging because it was winter. And oh, yeah. we said, we'll get back to you in the spring. And of course, this spring has been so unique. Um, but but I would be more than happy to get back to him and ask if he's willing to do that. And then Nate and Ben get in touch with you and we'll figure out a time. You know, that's great. Um, I think we could call, like I said, Taylor Davis got a quote for some um, shrub removal. DPW had a quote from a fence company that we could get that updated. So we could get you know a number of things together and bundle that as one request to the CPA committee if you know if that's what the commission likes. Hey, do you have a sense of how uh, the capacity of the um, monument company to undertake multiple projects? Yeah, we um, they were eager. It's funny. It's yeah. COVID really did. Um, you know, they were hoping to come back this um, this spring, and then that never happened. And then. You know, just this summer, it was kind of it kind of happened quietly. The the town council, uh, um, you know, approved a lot of the CPA request for fiscal year twenty one, which included another fifty thousand for headstone restoration in West Cemetery. So, currently, there's a hundred thousand dollars in headstone restoration in West Cemetery. But at that amount of money, you know, it triggers a different type of procurement. So, uh, but didn't is this the third one or the second one? This is the second and third, right? Second and third, yes. So why would it, couldn't it be done in two separate phases so it wouldn't trigger the 100,000 or more? Uh, I think now that we have the money, um, you know, that may be considered bid splitting. So it, you know, I I'd emailed Anthony just to ask about that or I was have an email in, in the works just because, you know, if we had done it earlier, it still doesn't look good though if, you know, I think, you know, no, even if we had done it in, um, we can't just keep uh, rolling a contract or amending a contract. So every time we get new money, we have to then do new procurement. And so, mm. you know, we can't always sole source it to, you know, a monument conservation collaborative. So at some point we have to seek a competitive bid, but. Well, it'd be nice if they could at least do this part and keep rolling along. Sorry, right. Jen, you froze there for a bit. Were you? Sorry. Um, it'd be nice if they could at least do part two this fall rather than waiting another winter. Right. You know, since that was already in the works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I, can I clarify something quickly? Because it was mentioned that there might be some kind of report on the condition of West Cemetery. I mean, uh, we're not looking for we're not looking to redesign the cemetery. We're simply looking at a sort of status report of, of what's there and, you know, sort of on a maintenance level, right? You know, right, and also, you know, at one point the idea was in the older section to have, you know, kind of make it a meadow mm -hmm. and have maybe, you know, whether it's grazing or you know, only twice a year mowing, but that was never really fulfilled. And so the West Cemetery plan had, you know, whole landscape design. So certain sections would have uh, whether it was historical plantings and seating, maybe lighting, and that was never really completed okay. too. So yeah, right, it's not redesigning it in the sense of, you know, moving graves or headstones or markers. It's kind of, you know, it's putting, you know, seeing what can be done with what's there. Uh, I do think it's interesting that we, you have got letters or requests from people about headstones and the condition of the landscaping. Um, you know, cemeteries are really important in America. That they're, they're they're the first public parks. Really, people you know they use them for recreation before before Olmsted. Um, so I I think um, it's it's fascinating to me that that COVID has actually prompted maybe a little bit more awareness or attention or just people are looking for outdoor spaces more. Um, really really fascinating. Yeah, we've had requests for, you know, both North and South Cemetery, um, you know, for headstone restoration there. Uh, and then we've also had a few requests for installation of new monuments or markers and I think uh, North and uh, West Cemetery for from families. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether it, it seemed like it was pretty active this summer in terms of uh, inquiries to the town. So, Well, it's the keeper of history of a town, mm -hmm. the, the headstones, and that's important to keep them restored in and it, it's another form of marking 
marking history. It's important, I think. I guess there may not be room there for our Civil War um, tablets. No, because it would be outdoor. Oh, because, yeah, yeah. Because they would be too, too fragile, yeah. So we will, we can continue the conversation about uh, the cemeteries and CPA next time, but this is a good segue to the discussion of Civil War tablets uh, and the site visit that has taken place. Sure, and just, just so there's two uh, attendees who I'll make analysts who I believe are part of the Civil War tablet with Anika. Uh, what's happening here? <clears throat> so, okay, so, Dr. Shabazz, Hello. Dr. Shabazz Hello. is here, and then I think Anika, are you on the phone? It's not Anika, it's her, it's Deborah Bridges. Anika oh, hi, Deborah. Okay, great, okay. okay. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll jump in, uh, if that's okay. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, basically provide everyone an update from what, where we left off um, last time. So I think I think last meeting focused mostly on the demolition delay bylaw. So maybe it's been like a month or so since we talked about the uh, Civil War tablets. And um, I think a, uh, I went to visit the tablets at Ruxton, and I think uh, just with this um, with staff and basically found the tablets um, in in the DPW garage there um, and they were kind of uh, in, in this garage that you know uh, was, they, were behind, they were behind pretty obstructed and hard hard to get to and also generally like not the most sanitary condition so I decided to uh, call off like the site visit with the historical commission and postpone that until it was either safer to visit Ruxton or we had found a, a better place to store the tablets. And, and then that kind of led to conversations with uh, within Town Hall about um, where where we have the facilities to um, store the tablets <clears throat> and uh, and possibly even like on crate them and inspect them to see kind of how they're doing. And I was working with Jeremiah, who's the facilities manager for the town. Um, you know, Nate and certainly Chris, the planning director, as well as Rob Mora, the building commissioner, we kind of put our heads together, um, you know, with input from Dr. Shabazz and Deborah Bridges, Anika, and um, we set, kind of settled on the, uh, the bank center as a possible location. Um, and for a number of reasons, uh, it's easy to access. Uh, and also right now, because of COVID, a lot of the programming or pretty much all the program has come to a halt. Um, and, you know, it's un unclear how long that will be the case, but um, right now there's like rooms in the basement that are unoccupied and likely to be unoccupied, you know, well into next year. And so um, myself, Jeremiah, um, Emil Karshabaz, who's with us, and Deborah, uh, I guess, was that just last week? I, I forget. Last week or the week before, yeah. possibly, we went to, um, we kind of did a site visit to the bank center um, where we looked into kind of just like a plan for how this could all work. Um, and we identified the, uh, what's called the poll room in the basement of the, you know, the Moose Anti Health Center. And it's a pretty big, wide open room um, and it's accessible via a ramp that comes down from the uh, from the ground level. Um, there's a, maybe a tight turn, but we think you know the tablets could make it through. Um, and so the plan, you know, tentative plan, might be to uh, bring the tablets into that you know larger what's called the pole room. You know, be able to um, inspect them while when, when they're in there, uh, on, possibly uncrate them, inspect them. Uh, have them possibly restored if need be, and then um, fairly close by, like right down the hallway, is a utility closet. So if if there is programming that is scheduled for that room, and the or the room needs to be used, uh, or you know 
we haven't found a, a location for the tablets for the long term. Like they they could be recreated and placed in that utility closet, um, kind of for hopefully not super long term, but you know, long term storage if, until we find a solution. So um, I think at this point it's kind of <clears throat> moving up the chain of command. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it in the in town hall, and ultimately, um, you know, we can make a recommendation to. The town manager is kind of how I see this playing out, and Nate, feel free to chime in. But um, I think oh, well. um, it's uh, it's something that you know should have been probably for the for the tablets, but um, kind of need to think through all the logistics of it at this point. Uh, ben, also, um, you did mention to us that they are also stored with uh, road salt, which is very corrosive. Yikes. So, yeah, so, so it's yeah. imperative that they um, be out of that facility or garage, to, to put them in a garage. I mean, but there, there are, you, you did say that there's salt stored in there and that's very, that's just unacceptable. And um, speaking with the director where the senior center is, bank center, that room is not going to be used for quite some time. And it would be perfect for them to be in there. It's temperature controlled and also where people, it, they have to be uncrated, uncrated to see what condition they're in. And you also mentioned about um, maybe building like an easel type um, structure to put each one, you know, in there, which would be great because people could actually come um, and look at them. Mm -hmm. But they really, it's imperative that they be out of there as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree, and I think it's it's a matter of... Um, Kind of figuring out those those logistics at this point and um is, kind of, is yeah. it just a matter of just getting movers of uh, some type of movers who who um you know can move something that heavy and get it in there because the longer they're in there with the salt and whatever it could be destroying them as we speak is there a sense of um when you say that they could be there, that the room won't be used for quite some time. Um, is that like a year or longer? Um, I, I think so. Well, I uh, I'm sorry. Um, I spoke to the director there, She and she was all for it. She said because it, it really, it could be, it could be um, January or, or longer. They said that, that nothing will happen. Be, they said that nothing will take place uh, through through January. It's possible oh, things may may happen after January. There's no definite reopening, but the room is definitely ours through January. Yeah, so I think you know Ben. You know Ben. Yeah, I think when we when we first looked at this, we thought the tablets would could stay in Ruxton, but the realization is they should be moving to another location. Uh, for temporary storage and the, the thought was the bank center the pole room is big enough that they could be uncrated and that gives opportunity for them to be viewed both by the commission and the team here but also by consultants we you know the hope would be that once they're if they could be uncrated and you know we could have you know the idea is to have consultants come and look at them and give an assessment of their condition and possibly make new crates and then move them out of the pole room to this other uh, storage room in the bank center. Uh, you know, it's, it's, if the commission likes that idea, you know, it could be, um, you know, we could send an email or a, you know, a letter to the town manager. It's really now discussions with the town manager and the town manager's office about what, you know, in the build, the facilities manager for the town, where is the best location. So, you know, I think they're still looking at if there's room in the schools or other buildings um, you know, I, the bank center, I think, was mentioned because it's ground level and it is easy to get the tablets in and out in the, in the, and they could all be stored in one room. I'm not there, really. 
Yeah, uh, just a question. I, I think when we had this discussion previously, there was some question whether they could actually be displayed in the bank center. Is is that a possibility? To, to it's only it would only consider? be displayed temporarily. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the permanent. Yeah, you know, I think if they're displayed now, it would just be temporarily, and then the discussion is still whether or not the bank center could become you know a permanent home. But that's not really. As part of this step, it's really about trying to get them out of Ruxton to not to a more stable. But I, I'm 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 asking the question whether because because the bank center is a community center, it's the the senior center, it's the health center. Um, people have access to it, handicap access access in every way, and there's lots of of corridor and wall space in there, and it's temperature controlled. Is is there any possibility that along the walls there could be a a display of the tablets and they could be project, protected. Dr. Chabot? I, I like how you're thinking. When I uh, went to the bangs to see the room that uh, the, pool, the pole room or uh, that we're talking about, as I walked through, I looked to the left at this area that it, it seemed to me could very well be a place where we might build a display uh, um, but uh, at this point, I want to underscore uh, what uh, Deborah Bridges was saying. We just need them out of the Ruxton facility. That is that is a very urgent situation. We need your help to uh, to alert the chain of command, to alert the town manager, to uh, to get them out of there. And uh, and then once we are able to uncrate them, see what their condition is, uh, uh, take care of them. Uh, in the uh, in the poll room, and uh, then from there, it is my thinking we can then really begin to accelerate the process of thinking about a long-term home. As long as they're sitting in there in Ruxton, it is no good for the tablets. It's no good for this process of getting something done. Let's get them out of the Ruxton facility. Let's get them to the poll room. And then from there, see the condition of them. And, 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 and from there, really start to think where is a ideal, where is a place. It might well be in that in that area where I don't think anything really goes on there. Uh, but I have to see, we have to see the tablets. We have to see what their condition is. We have to see what type of pedestals or base it, it would need to sit, rest on and how much space that would take up before we could really answer 100% what you're raising about the, about the bangs or really about anywhere else. We have to see the condition and we have to be able to assess what kind of support they're going to need in being displayed. So let's get them out of Ruxton, number one. Let's get them to the bangs where we have a space for them at least for four months. Um, and, and then in that, in that window of time, let's, we can then figure out where, where we want to permanently uh, uh, house uh, these tablets. That would be, that's, that's uh, my uh, statement for you this evening. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, us to, how about if I move that we authorize Jane to write a uh, letter? Can I ask a question first? Um, if, can DPW safely move these crates or does they, it need special handling? So they, at first they thought if they're maybe going to the North Amherst school, they could move them, but um, they've since, you know, determined that it would be better to hire someone else. I think they're you know, when we asked the, um, the conservators a few years ago, they, you know, they, they mentioned having a rigging company or someone who does professional moving, you know, it doesn't, you know, I don't, you know, so there is leftover CPA money uh, from a number of years ago when we, uh, when the town cleaned the tablets. And so we have money to hire a mover if we need to. And so, you know, um, my thought is with that money, we have um, the ability to hire a mover and we could hire a consultant um, to look at the, to look at the tablets and assess them again. Yeah. Okay. And I, that's, and I think, that's a big relief to me that um, yeah. this, that some someone who who can responsibly move them would yeah. use. Yeah. yeah, I think in DPW uh, they they they're fully cooperative to like you know prepare Ruxton for them to be moved, but 
gopher is happy to move around the equipment so they can be accessed easier. So, so I think, yeah. What can we do to get us to this next process of moving the tablets to the bank center? Yeah, I think. Can I add? Uh, yeah, uh, just just following on with that, I'm. My thought is that that between now and January is not a whole lot of time. Uh, no. Do we know, we, do we already know um, consultants that we could call on and to be able to line them up pretty soon after the tablets are moved? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think there's a few we could ask and, you know, try to get, um, you know, at least get some interest. Um, so I was gonna say, at least for the first step, you know, if the commission likes the idea of the bank center um, you know, my thought is that's part of the letter and it's also maybe just to say a climate controlled space that's big enough for them to be displayed in. So, you know, what if that becomes a room at the middle school or the South uh, Amherst campus, you know, the, the, the school there. I, I think the um, Jeremiah, the facilities manager, like the bank center, but now there's, you know, there's some consideration about, you know, what if, what if that did become active again in January? Is it worth a move now there for a few months and then having to move them again. But I think I think for the commission it would be important to write a letter or you know indicate the desire to get them out of Ruxton into a climate controlled space. And that's you know that's kind of step one. Um, you know I'm, I, I kind of wrote down a list of four steps here and I think you know the next one is looking at them and having them temporarily displayed and assessed. And then you know um, one is to get them possibly recreated, have new crates made. So when the consultants store them, you know, uh, Irving, one of the conservators indicated that the crates, you know, they're sturdy, but they're never meant for long-term storage. You know, maybe, I don't know, say, I don't know, we were thinking like two years at the most. And so he was saying that if they were going to be stored again, he might want to have new crates made. Um, yeah. And then, you know, have, think, thinking of a new location. And so, you know, I think an inside location is good. You know, bank center is one option. You know, I think the Jones Library is still a possibility. You know, they're, if people like that idea, they're going through the redesign, but you know, I, we haven't discussed that with the library and I'm just throwing it out there. You know, years ago when, uh, a few years ago when um, the historical society and library were talking about possibly having, you know, uh, an annexation or property and getting a bigger um, historical society and library, they were, the board of trustees of the library were pretty open to this. And the town staff, I wasn't a part of it. They met with them and there were ideas about having a pretty big space where they could be displayed. You know, that's changed now, but at the time, you know, everyone was pretty excited about it. Um, so I'm just saying that, you know, I think we could, if we're thinking about new locations, we could, you know, think of, you know, we could be pretty creative and then, you know, just kind of feel their opportunities with different people, but. Okay, so we should, we should work on the letter. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and do that ASAP. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it'd be great to get them out. I didn't realize salt was being stored there. So that is a corrosive environment. I, I, didn't, I, I knew Ruxton, I, you know, we've, we, honestly, we've stored um, paper files in the same building. I mean, it's really, is just a garage. Um, so I didn't realize that they had other chemicals there. I thought it was just kind of like dry storage, but. Yeah, there's like those huge, um, I don't know, I can't say, say for sure that there actually is salt being stored there, but the big like attachments that they put on the DPW trucks to actually salt the roads are like stored there vertically, like, you know, 15 feet tall, these big drums. Right. Um, but yeah, they're definitely <laughs> in the way, that's for sure. Um, right. I, I, um... I, I was under the impression that you, you did say that there was salt in being stored in there, but uh, whether that is, you know, the equipment has it on there, the, yeah. the thing is they have been in there too long. Yeah. Yeah. They've been it too long. So Jane, do you need a motion from the commission to um, uh, summarize our concerns and send a letter? Why don't we do that so that it's uh, it has it has the weight of emotion? I I, I like that. Yeah. That's what I was offering to do a few minutes ago. Yeah, sorry, Jan. So Jan, go for it. Can I also say that I don't think we should um, 
push to have them recreated because that's just going to be money that they'll say, well, then we don't need to find a permanent space for another 10 years or so. You know, we've just spent money on having them recreated. I think it'd be better to push to find uh, a permanent uh, exposition location. I wholeheartedly agree. And I, and I, I don't, and I think if we kick the can like that and recreate, then there's no, you know, we're back to maybe another 20 years before something gets right, right. I think okay, uh, yeah. the, the beauty of yeah. moving it to the bangs, having uh, a few months window, uh, it, it kind of puts a time, a time push on us to, to, to figure this out. And as to people to help us figure it out, you know, I've, I've, I've activated on calling folks just here at UMass uh, at, to our landscape architecture and regional planning uh, folks. I've, I've spoken to one of our architecture professors. You know, there, there's local resources to help us think through. Uh, um, this, and some of that, some of those calls I made was when we were still thinking of outdoor options and whether there's some type of material we could store, we could place the tablets in that would be protected from the elements. But whether we rule out outdoor possibilities, whether we're focused on indoor possibilities, we have local resources here that can help us uh, think through the ideal conditions for uh, uh, presenting them. Uh, and, and, and then it's just a matter of us identifying the space that will, that will welcome this and, um, and, and, and really, uh, and again, along with what was said this evening, the Bangs is very centrally located. It's, uh, there, there's a lot to it, but again, you'd ha we'd have to uh, um, design that, figure it out, talk to the, the occupants of the space who, who utilize the space. They know best what, uh, uh, what, they, what their needs are. So, um, and, and if it can work out, it may, maybe it can work out. If uh, other options come up that present themselves as a as a better ideal home, then we we can we have a window to look uh -huh. at. But I don't think it, we we need to kick the can down and and worry about this uh, uh, for another twenty years. I think we can we can if we if we have a little timeline of three four months. Uh, that's ideal because then we it it sort of in, uh, pushes us to think this through and figure this out. No, that thanks. Those are that's a good point, and I think. You know when um, you know when they're if when they are um, viewed for a few months. In addition to doing uh, you know a physical assessment of them, you know Ben and I talked today and said it'd also be great to hire someone to determine the parameters for both inside and outside uh, display. So, you know, not saying one or the other, but actually having whether it's an architect or you know a geologist or a team of people kind of do some assessment or just you know, look at the stones and then say, okay, this type of marble, if it is displayed outside, here are the parameters you need to display them. You know, this is the materials or climate control. And if they're inside, here's again, what are the kind of the, the framework for that? So, you know, I think those are things we've been thinking about, you know, in the next few months would be good to get going to help, you know, with this process. Uh, and, you know, they really do need to be visible for that to happen. So right now, you know, they, we, that can't happen at all. And, so, yeah. One final thing, the, the beauty of it being visible there is that I know there's been a lot of talk about the interpretive process and beginning to make a, a, a and we have a public history program here at UMass. We have uh, the history department. We have my department, the Du Bois Department of Afro-American Studies. The ability to, if not, you know, take a small group of students down there to, to, to see them in person. At least I can have some video. I can, you know, go down and, and, and have something, some photos that I can present to the architecture students, to the Afro-American studies students, to the history department, public history students, that they can then begin to, to make this a, a, a project whereby they can do some of the research that can go towards an interpretive uh, uh, document uh, or interpretive uh, uh, histo walls and panels that might be a part of the display at some point. But when they're, uh, while they're still created in a Ruxton facility, we can do nothing. 
we cannot, we can really do nothing. Uh, we don't know the, 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 the condition of them. We don't know what we're dealing with. Uh, to be able to look at them live or at the very least some video of, of these that have been crated up too long now, 15, however many years, this, this gives us an ability to marshal our five college resources to begin to make this a learning, a teaching and learning process. But as long as they're crated up in, the, in, in, a, in a shack, in a shed, uh, we can't do anything. So, okay. uh, why don't Jan go ahead and make, make the motion? Uh, submission, send a letter uh, written by Jingwald. <clears throat> I think or I'll help. Jan, I, sorry, I think you froze again. Oh, God. You just heard the make a letter from Jane Wald. That sounds good enough. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> just, the, the, the purpose of the letter is to move them from Ruxton to the bank center to or a controlled civil, facility. Climate, climate control facility. Not necessarily to bank. Be, to a climate control facility to be uncrated, to be viewed, to be evaluated, and an immediate and a plan made to immediate display. Pat, so that was your motion? That sounded really good. Yep. Well, I, I I didn't mean to usurp, Jane. No, that's <laughs> fine. I don't know why I'm going in and out. I, I'm just trying to merge our thoughts, Jan. No, that's good. Cool. <laughs> and the letter should be addressed to? The town oh. manager's office, town manager. OK, I just want that in the motion so that it's clear what the letter is. Destination is. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'll second it. Hetty. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, I can't see everyone uh, on the screen right now. So I'll do a. I guess I'll do a roll call just to to take the vote. Um, Pat. In favor. Hetty. I'm in favor. Dan? Yes. Robin? Yes, I apologize. I can't get my camera to work. Mm. That's okay. Jane? I'm in favor. Thank you. And I am too. So a unanimous, unanimous vote. Great. To go ahead and do that letter. Um, okay, so just for clarification for the minutes, because Jan started making the motion, but then Pat <laughs> voiced it. What should I say made the motion? You could say Pat. Together. Okay, I'm like, I had, I had it at first I had Jan, but then when Pat finished it, I changed it to Pat. So I just want to make sure. So it was a joint motion. It was yeah. a joint, joint motion. motion, Jane. Joint motion. Okay, I will fix that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Jane, um, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, the Bang Center is a climate controlled, um, and I think, um, and I spoke to, um, I did speak to the director, um, Mary Beth Ogilvy, um, and she also is agreeing that that's the perfect room for it to be in. So, and and I think that is the best place for them where people can actually go see. Yeah, but we don't want to write the letter saying specifically banks because if for some reason somebody in the town authority decides that's not the best and they have another one, then our letter would become irrelevant. If we just say climate controlled, that's the most likely place right now, but at least then if they find somewhere else, as long as it is climate controlled, we're still in favor. I think we could say I that, I, I think we could say as part of the discussion, we mentioned that the bank center is a preferable location. Sure. Uh, yeah. You know, just yeah. so that, yeah. Yeah, that can be in as a secondary thing, but it, not in the uh, motion. Right. Because I'm just thinking if, if you know, you're writing and, and saying that if they see we actually have somewhere that's agreeable that we seen, then it won't be going through a long process of, well, maybe this one, maybe that one. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay. I think it, it makes sense to spell that out. Yeah, while still yeah, I, think it, it out. I really think so, because, you know, it's, I, I mean, you know, 
I, I'm a little biased. My dad started this 20 years ago, and, and I w- would like to be around to see it happen. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, just for the fact that, you know, it, it it tends to, okay, well, what about this? What about that? Like I said, if we have a place and let them know it's agreeable, we've seen it. It's big. It's the climate control. It's perfect for them to be there. It's big enough for people to come and look at them. And it's just a matter of moving them. I don't see the problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, Can I just uh, make a one comment? It's Robin here. Um, oh, I just um, I just wanted to um, contribute uh, that it seemed like um, down the line, the library seemed like a, a some sort of a natural um, a natural partner. So I don't know if we can talk more about what that means later. But the other thought that I just had popping into my mind was whether in the context of library or historical society, um, whether you could, so, so that it doesn't necessarily have to wait for all of them to find a permanent home, if there could be a temporary display of one of them to give the community a sense of their presence. Mm-hmm. So just throwing that out there. Yeah. But they would all have to be looked at and uncreated, all of them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I we, want to, go ahead, James, sorry. Well, uh, we could sort of simultaneously send a letter to the library trustees explaining what we're doing, uh, you know, to, to get it on their radar again and give them mm-hmm. a little time timetable of, you know, how we, when we expect they'd be moved and created, inspected, and uh, their condition assessed, just to sort of prime them for hearing from us again. Yeah, I so move. <laughs> I second. <laughs> There's also, a, I don't know whether Amilcar would like to comment on this, but there would also be some justification for um, displaying the tablets um, on campus, um, given the history of UMass in you know, and the Civil War being kind of in parallel, as it were. Um, you know, there's there's a there would there could be a case given what you were saying earlier about the public history program. Um, it would be an interesting idea. Um, I used to teach in a public history program at UNH, and um, I've also worked on a marble outdoor marble monument and. I think one of the other things that is really important for us is to to really think about who this conservator might be, because looking after this kind of object, you know, is something that is going to happen over time. You know, there might be an initial treatment and then there might be some kind of maintenance that happens every other year, depending on how they're displayed. And and, uh, I I would love to see um, the university play a role um, in in that even even earlier on in terms of even thinking of them as a yeah. a place for a location. There are already m- memorials. Um, I know this is a a hot topic, but there are already other kinds of um, places of memory, places of of commemorative um, display on campus. So, just a thought. But do they need to be on town property? Is that the issue with UMass? Isn't isn't the same as having them yeah. on Chris Town property, right? Yeah, I and mean, that would be a consideration for you know how or where they could be displayed. But you know, I, I think for now, I mean, it's an idea. I wanted to say, um, I did a little research today. There's this like kind of this listserv um, for planners in Massachusetts, and I uh, I posted a kind of a, this question to the planner listserv and um, about. Uh, my understanding is that a lot of these town, cities and towns in Massachusetts have these Civil War tablets. So, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel necessarily. So I was kind of curious what other towns had done. Uh, and with, it was kind of wild. Within like half an hour, I got around like 10 responses um, from a number of towns all throughout Massachusetts. Um, and I guess actually um, most of them were indoors, kind of in like town hall like meeting rooms. Um, I looked at Westford, Groton, Harvard, um, uh, Canton, and Sturbridge were all indoors. Um, and I can send along these pictures, but I did 
it looked like East Hampton on their old town hall, which is now currently like a artist studio. I think Flywheel Arts Collective is there. Um, there's a Civil War tablet that's displayed outside. Um, and I'll follow up with him, but the planner there said they have to like re redo the lettering every, you know, every year or so, or every other year or something. And that's, that's the maintenance. Um, there might, uh, that might, there might be more to it than that, but, uh, at, at the very least, that's what he said. And, but I, I think it's interesting that like, at least of the 10 or so that responded to me, most, all, all but one were indoors. Um, and you know that's probably due to the maintenance and issues with climate control but i think i would encourage people to i'll keep looking into it but um if you know people in other towns or know people who work for other towns or do this public history in other towns like this isn't we're not the only town to have to figure out what to do with these civil war tablets so um it would be nice to kind of look into what other people have done and how they thought this through yeah, it's interesting. I, you know, I, I did some research too, and I saw a number of articles in the last five years of communities facing the same problem with uh, marble uh, monuments or things outside saying, oh, the lettering's being worn away or the marble's getting old. But there's a few communities um, throughout New England, but then I couldn't find the solution. So yeah. I found you know, an article in the paper where they went to the council or the select board and said, you know, we need to raise some money. But then if I did more research online, I never found out if they ever did it. So it, you know, it's, you know, I think, you know, cause it's interesting. I mean, you know, from mid uh, 19th century to early 20th century, they, you know, there was a number of things that were, um, especially marble, Tennessee marble, soft marbles that were displayed around the country and in New England. But yeah, I can, I, I, I did a, a lot of different searching online. I couldn't find a good example of, um, restoration of tablets. So, you know, there's monuments, you know, statuary or other things, and that's been done, but the tablet piece is harder to, for me to find a good example of. So it's easy to find restoration of different other monuments, but not uh, something as similar that, that we have. So I'll keep looking. Now, these, these are, seem to me very close to the kinds of shapes and material that you see on friezes around buildings. And so many of those things are probably still attached to the right. building on which they were um, first, which for which they were first made. I mean, think it puts me in the mind of the Parthenon marbles, which I've watched very, very closely for 30 years and what they needed to do with them. You know, they're in the British Museum, but then there's copies in Greece and they've been fighting for years over it. Um, but when I went to Athens, last time they have did their copies and they have a few of the originals left in their new museum and they've done a really nice job of putting them up a little bit not to, not as high they were originally to be seen from 40 feet they're not doing that now but they're not in boxes or cases or anything in front of them they're just in a climate controlled space on these very strong pins that stick out from the wall and they're mm -hmm. so nothing um, takes away from their, you know, their look and there's nothing that has to be cleaned in front of them. They can't be reached for people to touch them and, and get like hand oil and things on them, but they're still quite visible. And it's a very simple kind of display that doesn't um, hurt anything below it. So if you have a meeting room that's large enough, you can put them up on the wall high and still have chairs and other furniture below. Um, but they'd be perfectly visible, especially if you light them in a, you know, an appropriate way. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of places. Whoops, library. I don't think we have any spaces in town hall that are high enough, but there are other buildings that have large rooms, you know. Outside, it's just so complicated because marble gets so pitted by rain and, and air pollution and everything else. I just don't think we should even consider outside for marble. I'm just wondering, did we, um, did we want to revisit, there was a motion or a move made to write a letter to the library and. Oh yeah, we never had second on my motion. <laughs> second. Oh, second. All right. All right, uh, any further discussion? Wait, can we, the, that, the motion, 
to write a letter to the library went so fast I couldn't get it written down. So motion made by Jan to write a letter to the library about storing the tablets. Is that what we were no. saying? No, Jane was talking about um, reminding the library to keep it, or re reminding them that we want them to start thinking again as they design the new library renovation that we might be coming back to them with a specific proposal and we just want to get it on their radar again. And so she was talking about that and I, I just said, I so move with the other one. So it's to, it's to, you could just say there was a motion that the historical commission send a letter to the library trustees um, to let them know that we would like to start talking to them again about possible display of the Civil War tablets. How's that? Yep. You do realize how heavy these are, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're 60, 600 to 800 pounds. Yeah, yep. and that's, that's why it would be wise for, it would be wise for them to think about that <laughs> in, in their architecture and the structural supports that they need for the building. Uh, I don't think it's in, it's it's not impossible to have an outside um, structure like them inserted like in a wall type thing, you know, to or to be if they're in like plexiglass sealed in something like that. But that's something that again we're putting the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. We have to. We, you know, we really have to see what condition these are in. And I, I you know, and, and for somebody, the library is not always open. People can, or not everybody goes in there and goes to look. If it's, if it's in a, a, a structure like, like a, a art, art, an arch shaped type of wall that you can see from behind and front and they're inserted with plexiglass, whatever that will protect them from the elements, it seems to me a better idea. So well, let's I mean, get them moved like, first and, and yeah. evaluate them. And in the meantime, we can put put the word out um, that we're looking for a space. I personally think that they should be indoors only because of the fragile nature of marble and, and that it, it indoors in what would be considered a permanent place. But we, sure. that remains to be seen. Right. Well, yeah. 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 That, uh, as this effort moves forward, um, but I want to uh, thank Deborah and, and Dr. Shabazz for coming to uh, talk with us tonight. Uh, I feel like this is a good step forward, and um, appreciate uh, the work you've done on it and your commitment to this whole this whole idea. Great. Okay, dokie. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for your hope, time. I hope thank you for your time on this. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so shall we now go to the discussion of the bylaw for preservation of historic structures? It's nice to have that new title. Yeah. Um, I just want to, because I, I put that we made a motion, do we need to do a roll call vote on that motion? Uh, Oh, I thought we did. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so I second. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that roll call. And I'm just going to go in the order of people on my screen. So, uh, Robin. Uh, I, I'm in favor. Hetty? That, that looked like a yes. <laughs> uh, Jan? Yes. Uh, Pat? Yes. Jane? Yes. Okay, and I, I vote yes also. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Sorry for that oversight. Jane, so if you get tired of writing all these letters, I'm happy to help. Thank you. You know, this is good though. I'm glad it'll be good to get the letters out there and then get the conversation started again. I think it's been a while. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Okay. So, Nate, in, in terms of getting a, a mover, um, will that be a process that gets extended or is that something that can happen quickly once this gets underway? I think it can happen pretty quickly. It depends on the price. You know, if it's under 10,000, we can just uh, 
contract directly with someone if it's over 10 then you have to seek three quotes not that that's a big deal but you know i think um uh you know we would just have to i could add, there's a few people to ask who they would recommend and then you know we just have to get an estimate from them so it's not better be under 10. yeah yeah i know it's one of those things it's just you know but it's a little bit of a process not bad okay that's good to know yeah thank you yeah actually that's a good um ben let's make a note of that i think we should just you know follow up with bpw and get actually um and work on a quote for that okay you know, yeah Jer up. jeremiah has been bugging me about that too so okay All right, so going to the bylaw, uh, last time at our last meeting, uh, we were digging deep into definitions. And um, do we need any other attention to definitions for, especially for things like building versus structure or alteration, significant alteration? I don't think we, uh, I don't think we quite finished up what what demolition specifically yeah. would mean right. and um, would you want to share your screen i could stop my share and then you could yep. share oh whoops what happened there i think i just hijacked the screen Is that oh, no yeah I, I clicked on something else too so my zoom window disappeared but okay i'm, I'm back yeah so um for the definitions um I, yeah, basically I wasn't at the last meeting and then I, uh, I watched it on YouTube after the fact and then um, kind of- That must have been fun. It was fun, it was <laughs> very exciting. I, I was telling Nate, I was like, it felt like I was on the call and I kept trying to like butt in and talk. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, realized I was watching a recording, but um, it's okay, what, I think. What did you want to tell us, Ben? Oh, <laughs> just that you guys were doing a great job. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I, I don't remember at this point. Um, I think there were, I think there were like probably, you know, comments I had made that uh, I could have clarified or something like that. But um, yeah, I wanted to, I think this was a change that I did based on the comments um, from the meeting, basically taking away the significant alteration definition altogether and just adding that to demolition so then there's only this one thing that's referred to as the act of this bylaw which is demolition and demolition can encompass these two things um, and I don't know if there's any wordsmithing that needs to be done I literally just copied and pasted the significant alterations um, definition and put it in here I think that's what we discussed you know I, I pressured I pressured the commission to to see if they wanted to keep the significant alteration and you know folding it into the demolition I agree I, I like the idea that there's no you know that's what it is it's not something else and that we agreed on that um, um, can I make a comment I sent um, I replied to uh, an email of um, Ben's that I think came for the last meeting um, just because I, I, after the last meeting, there was a lot of discussion around porches and windows and architectural details, and um, and I was actually searching for a definition of preferably preserved, but I found in um, both in the um, in the demolition delay guidebook and then in Newton's. Um, preservation bylaw that they had they had been incredibly specific about certain architectural details and I just I don't necessarily think that we have to talk about it or consider it today but if people wanted to look at that I just thought it was really interesting it's really long I mean it's they're like um, um, as something to consider it's sort of like they further define what needs to come in front of the commission. So if you had a historically significant porch, 
um, you know, it would be named specifically. I'm, 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 I'm not doing a very good job explaining this, but um, like, I mean, in the, in the demo delay guidebook, they say, um, if you feel that your commission needs a clearer sense of what constitutes demolition, de develop a policy and co cooperation with your building inspector, but then they give this a little example that says, the following is considered demolition according to the historical commission, removal of a whole roof, removal of one or more exterior walls, removal of more than 25% of the square footage of the building. So I, I would just ask maybe that I can um, circulate that uh, bylaw and just have people look at it and see if there are any particular areas that could be added into the, the bylaw, if there's anything in particular that we're concerned about that might fall out of whatever definition we're landing on. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think, thanks Rob. And I think the, um, you know, when Rob, the building commissioner was here last meeting, he seemed pretty comfortable with these definitions of how they could be interpreted. So, you know, my thought is the, um, we have, we'll have exemptions, which I like, so people will know what clearly is exempt. And then, you know, the, the planning department and the inspection services is now, you know, we've been together now for a few years. So, you know, as this would move along, you know, we could shop it around to Rob and the inspectors again and see if there's any questions about these definitions. But typically when someone applies now, um, you know, the default is to ask Rob or myself or, you know, now Ben, if, if, it sh if they should submit, you know, if someone submits a building permit application, for instance, staff is pretty knowledgeable now about telling them they need a demolition application. So I don't, you know, I don't think it gets lost, but if we want to define it further, we could. So I think that's, you know, good if we want to send it around. Okay, um, I'll send it around and people can look at it and see what they think. Yeah, I mean, Rob seemed pretty comfortable with the 25%. He seemed like he could, he could work with that. But I, yeah, I, the question about those certain elements are interesting. Um, but I think part B now, kind of captures those. So, you know, someone might not be taking down 25% or more of a building, but they're changing or modifying uh, an architectural element like a porch. So that captures it. I, I mean, that's the sense, right? That's, that's my understanding of why we did that. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually like this A and B because I think it captures um, uh, the elements that we can make an interpretation about depending upon upon each individual building that comes before the commission without having to be so specific about roof, porch, windows. It's, it's um, elements define the historic integrity of the design is pretty straightforward in my opinion. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I hope so. I think when we began thinking about a bylaw revision, I think one of the, and this may, as Nate, you've indicated, this may have changed over the last few years since um, planning and inspection have come together, but I thought that Rob was looking for more direction, but if he's, you know, if he's comfortable with it, then that's good. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's still be good to look at what Newton did and, you know, consider it, but for now, I think, I think, yeah, I thought he seemed this, I, we talked after, I thought this seemed he was good with this. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I think, I think today was going to focus more on procedure. Is that correct, Nate? Yeah. If we could go back up, if you just scroll to the top end just quickly, I just want to see. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so the purpose, I thought, yeah, we, we worked that just a little bit, but I think that captures it. Um, definitions and we're only defining a building now which I think one one thing I wanted to say was uh, originally there was like an eligible building definition in here and that ended up getting cut just to simplify things um, yeah. which makes sense um, but I think down here uh, no demolition purchase for an eligible building. So by, I think there's more 
criteria for what's an eligible building besides just the 50 years or older. Um, for example, um, like, I'm not sure if, uh, I, I thought we were gonna like exclude uh, struck or buildings that are in the local historic district because those would be subject to historic district review. Um, and maybe there's other things, um, but I think by having that eligible building definite uh, language in there, then as as we want to make changes to how we define an eligible building, we can just change the definition um, up here rather than needing to spell it out, um, kind of like as we do here, I think. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite following the last part then about here yeah. versus there. Um, um, you're moving around so fast on the page. I can't tell. Sorry, what you're sorry. Yeah. Well, I guess. I, think the, I mean, we thought that the, the the really the single threshold is 50 years or older. So we weren't going to try to do a street address list or anything right. else. It was the 50 years or older. So the the sentence oh. reads now, you know, no demolition permit sh for a building 50 years or older shall be issued without following the provisions of this bylaw. So it's, you know, I well, think I thought, if, if we define an eligible building, people don't know what eligible building means. They don't know what eligible is. So I think- Yeah, we just put the definition right in the sentence and then we don't need it. It's fine. Um, but I'm just saying like, what about a building like the, uh, that's not 50 years or older, for example, the, uh, um, Frank Lloyd Wright House or something, or a building that's in the historic district that wouldn't be subject to this review. I think we haven't really talked about, I think, I, I think we- that was we, in the exceptions, no? Uh, also, I don't think we should exclude buildings that are in a local historic register district or a local historic district. Uh, we, hadn't, we hadn't talked about that yet. Uh, I, th I, thought that, I thought that came up with the uh, Chris Kelly's um, discussion, but yeah, my, my apologies. I thought well, we mentioned it, but we hadn't discussed it in the okay. bylaw. Gotcha. So okay. I think if we start here on section 13.3 and just, you know, do we like where this, how this okay. starts, you know, it just says no building permit or demolition permit should be issued for a building 50 years or older, you know, without following the provisions of this bylaw. So that that's, you okay. know, that's, that's the trigger right there. And if we want to have um, anything what else. What is this line that's been crossed out about if it's unknown age? Do we want to worry about that? Um, interesting. Yeah, so I, that was in the MHC guidebook, like their sample demolition delay bylaws. Um, and so what they, what they had said is, it said like if you just don't know how old the building is just assume it's older than 50 years so the reason i had included that when i tried to do a mishmash of all of this stuff is because i i it feels like we really want to err on the side of caution with a lot of these things and so while it might be kind of frustrating to have to get an application for something that isn't necessarily 50 years old if we don't know then i feel like we're at least giving it an extra consideration. So I guess that was that was why it was in there originally, mm -hmm. if that helps. Yeah. I, I am fine to keep it. Probably Leave makes it sense in. to keep it, yeah. So I guess I'm going to say that there is um, the assessor's database, you know, it's unfortunate, but um, over the years there's been a few major updates. So sometimes they list a lot of buildings as being built in 1966, like a default year. I don't know why, but so, um, you know, and there's other years too. So I think if we had something like this and someone's not sure, then they have to, yeah. Okay. Okay, then we have that the application contents. So the address, the owner's name, description of the building, reason for requesting a permit, brief description of the proposed reuse, reconstruction or replacement, and photographs of the building. Or, or photographs 
it's an of and it should say or. Oh yeah. Okay. And that, can we do something in there about, it has to be a complete application because so many people don't do all those things and then we have to send it back or deal with it. The, the application also asks for who's going to do the demolition in a timeline. That's right, yeah. 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 So I think what's happening now is, you know, our demolition permit is also then used as the building permit. So we do ask for, you know, like the contractor's license and, you know, uh, utility sign offs, uh, asbestos information or hazardous material, which I don't think is necessary for the commission review, but I do think the contractor timeline for demolition is important. So mm -hmm. I think that's currently on the application. It is, but I think, yeah. yeah. I would add it here as one of the buttons. Um, and I would also say, um, shall, shall file with the building commissioner a complete application containing the following information. So that if it's incomplete, it can be sent back before it ever gets near us. So maybe up here, like an applicant proposing to demolish a building subject to file, shall file a, a complete, complete, complete application. Yes. Oh, the app, the, you know, it, it, it comes down below after yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, wait, no, no, no. Well, you can do it there. Then, then yeah. take an application out after commissioner if you're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what was the. Period what, out after replacement. You've got too many periods. It's only on the very last um, item that you'll have a period. Yeah. Was there additional item you wanted to add to this bullet list? Uh, contractor information or timeline for removal. I, it could be two separate ones. Oh. Yep. We're putting you on the spot, Ben. This was tough for me last time. I, <laughs> <laughs> and I just ate popcorn so my hands are a little greasy too. So. <laughs> um, timeline for demolition and contractor information. And um, license number, did you say that? Right, that should be there too. Yeah, I mean, isn't a lot of this is spelled out in the application itself, right, Nate? Like that they need to do like workers' comp and stuff like that, or right. But I think you know, if we have it here, then you know, my thought is at least these are these aren't you know, this, the license number is pretty specific, but I think the yeah. rest of it is it's guideline. You know, if we say it here, then it has to be in the application as opposed to some administrative decision later. So we're, what we're saying is these are this is the foundation for an application and the staff wants to you know ask for an email address or some other things but it at least has to include these points mm -hmm. um, so now, we, we might want to add the email owner's name address telephone number and email yeah we can get that contact oh, yeah. information or and you know if we uh we say seven days if we go back up to the definitions, Ben, we I just we define days or we have calendar days. Business day. Business day. So to me then, instead of saying seven days, we should say se um, we should say seven business days. I mean that yeah. why otherwise it's not we don't need to we don't need to define it. Um, where does it say seven days? In the beginning of the next paragraph. The okay. building commissioner shall within seven business days forward a copy. Have we been like capitalizing defined words? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Business. So you have to, yeah. Yeah. I forward a copy of the complete, <laughs> just to read yes. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all caps under complete. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I will say that Rob is. Um, he's, you know, instructed staff to turn back, turn, you know, send back applications that are incomplete. So, Good. you know, sometimes other, other building commissioners or staff would you know, try to work with an applicant and he, he says, you know, contact them once if they don't follow up within a week or something, just mail it back to them. So he's comfortable doing that. Okay. Good. Um, demolition of over 25% of the structure, I would take out visible from the street. I I agree with that. Are we, I, so hold on, I just want to. Um, Whoa. You know, this is this is defining. Um, this is. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this is. 
this is defining demolition all over again. And if we're doing a two-step process, I just want to see why, what we're trying to say here. This kind of gets into like the eligible building and, and eligible. It's kind of like, this is kind of like an eligible, what, some speaking to eligibility of the structure. And some of this is uh, kind of eligibility of the demo or how applicable the demolition is. I think this whole section needs to be rewritten. Can we to scroll? match the definitions. Yeah. yeah, can you scroll down, Ben, just a little bit? I just, just, we have exemptions. We don't have to look at them. I just want to see something. Yeah, more demolition permit application. Well, this kind of gets more into procedure, it looks like, actually. Hmm. But later on, where we have criteria, um, yeah. I mean, could we say uh, up in that section that the building commissioner? I think we need to combine. If, if it meets the criteria, any of the criteria spelled out in. Section, yeah. whatever. Or is it, it appears meets the definition it? of demolition? And then you don't have to repeat it. Yeah. 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 If the building or the conditions apply, A should be if the application, if the application for them above or something like that. Um, you, you put out there a little bit, Jane, sorry, or Jan, sorry. Um, you just say, if the application <clears throat> meets the, the definition of demolition right. as written above or as yeah. whatever. Meets the definition of demolition. Yeah, meets the definition of, not criteria, yeah. definition. Yeah. yeah, as defined in this bylaw. Yeah, that's fine. Great, period. And then none right. of the rest of that needs to be. <laughs> yeah. So, or keep the or. Okay. So, I, okay, yeah. So, just to talk through this so the application then is submitted to the building commissioner, is what we're saying. And the building commissioner has the first step to determine that it's an actual. Uh, demolition application. So, I mean, I, I think for me, it would almost be like the procedures we have below would be nice to have them consolidated. So first step is the application is submitted to the building commissioner. Yeah. If it's then if it's um, so then within seven days, uh, the building commissioner forwards it to the commissioner's designee Step two was then that the designee, which might be the chair of the commission and staff, determine the building significance. So there's an administrative step there. It's not part of the public hearing. Once it's determined it's a demolition, step two is determine significance. Step three is hold a public hearing to, de to determine preferably pres preserved status. So I just feel like the this the proceed the process or procedure section should just to me clearly outline those steps. Mm -hmm. I think so we're adding we're adding the administrative act of staff and a commission designee to determine whether it goes to the commission. Right. It, it's if it's if we want to do it that way. I feel like the rest of this stuff is just um I almost think we can delete a lot of this because this isn't procedure. This is more about a, a, eligibility and I would delete, yeah I think we delete all of it okay so does some of this go in definite in the definitions area no we, we've done rid of some are, you know the co the complete application doesn't come to the commission or its designee the complete application comes to the commission and that would be if the building commissioner or the building commissioner and the historical commission's designee determine that one or more of the following conditions apply, right? Right. So it's just, 
I didn't totally follow that. Yes, there. right. It says that the copy of the complete application comes to the commission or its designee. That's not true. Right. It only comes if the building commissioner or the building commissioner and staff along with a historical commission designee determine that one or more of the following conditions apply. Mm -hmm. So one is it meets the demolition of application and two would be that the structure is determined to be significant. Okay, right? but that first paragraph has to be changed. Seven, sorry. Defined in this file. So, okay, the building commissioner shall within seven business days. I already copy the historical commission if, okay, just take out or it's designee right there. We'll put it back in later. Okay. If the building commissioner or the building commissioner with staff and a historical commission designee. Uh, determine. Right. No, 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 no. The historical commission designee. You're putting in too much. Okay. No. Historical. Can we just say the historical commission designee? And yeah, that's what I'm trying. Yeah, I wanted to say actually. Um, sorry. In the in the definition. <laughs> commission member. Well, Sorry. can we finish this before you move around? Can we get it finished before we forget and you move around? So you have historical commission, take out the comma and the or it's just historical commission designee. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say in the definition of historical commission up above, um, it's it currently says historical commission or it's designee. And I know that's a little confusing, but it allows us a little flexibility. Yeah, just... but these are two separate processes. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and then and then say it's determined, not not take the s off because then we have two possible. It becomes plural, and then it goes on. So this takes care of what Nate was saying that there's, you know, two layers here. Either the whole thing goes, or the building commissioner and the staff determine with the designee from the commission that it goes forward. Nate, does it make sense from what you were asking? Yep, yeah, for now, I, I wanna make sure, I just wanna make sure that when we get down to the, um, more of the procedures that it's clear. Right. But for here, the, yeah, I think the rest of this to me would be deleted. Just, it's, it's redundant and some of it's not what we're saying anymore. Okay. Maybe delete the, the end of, yes. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. So, but then, um, so it's 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 so application is forwarded to the historical commission. Um, should should there be a second bullet point here about uh, it being found significant? I would just say that the so it's going to go to the building commissioner and the historical commission designee. Um, determine that the application meets the definition of demolition defined in this bylaw. Right. You don't need A. You don't need anything. If there's only one, you don't need them. Okay. Yeah, I think you can just delete everything after determine and then take out bullet point A and just turn that into one sentence. Yeah, just back up. Just start okay. backing but up. But as it is now, this is saying the complete application goes to the commission. Um, only because it uh, meets the definition of demolition. Right. But don't, don't mm -hmm. we want the, a designee to review it for significance first before the complete application goes to the commission? I think what we're saying is that after determines in that paragraph above, determines yeah. that the application meets the definition of demolition as defined in the bylaw, period. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because that includes, in that definition, includes the issue of significance. Uh, so uh, I think it, it will become one sentence. Which is Maybe I can just. So, yeah, that, that ends, ends that sentence up there. 
Yeah, determines that the application. Okay. Right. I, I promise that formatting will improve, but I understand. I thought it'll be one fluid subject. Okay. No, I'm I'm a little. Uh, so this significance. That's. Is that in the definition of demolition? I don't. Can we scroll up to the definitions again? No, ben, it's, it's, yeah, I don't believe it is. Um, yeah. I, so I think we may be. Uh, we may be a little hemmed in by the way that sentence begins. So we could. Can you scroll keep scrolling up, Ben, for a minute, though? I'm just curious. Uh, the only thing in business day commission. All right. So there, there is a definition for significant building, and that it meets the criteria. How about the a building found by the historical commission or its designee? Right. No apostrophe. Uh, I knew someone would call me out on that. <laughs> I was like, it's 50-50, I don't know. No. <laughs> so if we, go, if we go back down to what we're trying to do with the building commission, right. I feel like we're a little bit trapped by the beginning of the sentence and maybe it should be Yeah, I mean, I, so maybe we should flip it if the building commissioner or the building commissioner and the historical commission designee determined that the application meets the definition of demolition of a significant building uh i, mean, I think there's still two though it's both it's both the def definition of demolition and and has been determined to be yes a significant building yes Yep. Then, then it gets passed to the historical commission. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. So that's where that's where I kind of was before. I, if we keep if we keep this uh, colon at the end, then we can just add a B. That's the building is found to be significant by the designee. Um, that's that's what triggers it being the full thing submitted to the okay. historical. Sure. So, but those aren't even. One is that it meets the definition of demolition, and the other is that it's determined to be significant. But those aren't really either or. It's only determined to be significant if what is being done is demolition. Otherwise, you don't bother to determine that it's significant, yeah. right? Yeah. So there, maybe there, it should. I this is really. Yeah, it should be two steps here. First, it's it's probably Rob is going to be the one who really understands the extent of the project and can determine, you know, if it meets the criteria of demolition. And then that, then he would submit it to or forward it to the designee. Right. So I think right. So the first step should be within seven days, the building commissioner, or I mean, it could be like five business days or something. The building commissioner. Um, uh, determines if the application meets the definition of demolition. Period. Yeah. And then next step. Yeah. Next, yeah. So is it to the historical commission? No. Historical commission, commission doesn't mean if the application meets the definition of demolition as, as defined. So is that true? It only goes to the designee? Yeah, I think that's what we're saying. So with the two-step process, it would be, you know, first, the, it, if it meets demolition, then it goes on to, it could be, I mean, so I think that's something the commission needs to discuss. Is it, um, is it, uh, you know, a team of staff and one or two members of the commission? Is it a chair of the commission and staff? But the idea is that the that it's no longer at the public hearing whether or not the building's determined to be significant. That's done administratively without a hearing. So that, okay, well, I mean, that's, that's a bit- We haven't stated that yet about whether it's significant. We're just saying if it meets the definition of demolition. 
Right, but the next step would be. Yeah, and maybe we don't need to do the whole procedure in this section because we're still under the, oh, sorry. Oh, this is procedure for obtaining a permit. So, okay, maybe this is the section to do procedure. But I was just gonna say, it seems a little jumbled right now because right now there's kind of similar level of detail for procedure down here. Um, I think yeah, I think that demolition permit application would be moved up or deleted, but I, we're yeah. not there yet. Okay. So if we go back up, would we say just within five business days? I mean, I don't I don't think the building commissioner needs a week to determine if it's. Like, yeah, I mean that's what actually kind of what it says here. Different yeah. section. The building commissioner shall notify the applicant in five business days. Well, that's separate. That's okay. notification okay. later. That's separate. Okay. Do you think we do you think we said five five business days? Yeah, that's, I think that's better. Yeah. Yeah. It, then it, significance. Yeah. So how do we do that? Separate section. All right. So okay. So that would be like thirteen point four procedures. No. Okay, just a new paragraph. No, it's a new paragraph in the same. Okay. Yeah. Do we say the, you know, at this point, I'd want to, to me, the historical commission designee is somewhat ill defined. I mean, do we say, or do we leave it that way because it's the bylaw and we want to be generic? But, and who are we assuming now uh, would review it for significance? I mean, do we want to say, staff and the historical commission designee. I mean, is it, is it, that's all we say, staff and the histor historical commission designee and staff. Is it always going to have a designee or sometimes the staff does it without us, right? Well, that's the question. I mean, that's why we're writing all these details in here. So we don't have to be involved sometimes. Well, we're, didn't we talk about, um, Chris said something about some towns will have it where the the like chair or someone else of the historical commission in conjunction with staff will also <laughs> take a quick look at it before they send it on to the full commission. <laughs> and so that, yeah, that that's was what we're part saying, of, but I'm just wondering if it's necessary every time. Well, you know, it may be, again, I'm going back into history of, <clears throat> of how we began talking about the bylaw, but at that time, uh, there was concern among members of the commission that they wanted a kind of, you know, sort of civilian <laughs> to it, you know. Uh, so I don't, uh, if we say historical commission designee, does that mean it is always be the chair? Yeah, it doesn't always have to be the chair. It could be a rotating kind of thing. It yeah. could be chair. It could be it could be a member of the historical commission and staff. Or it could I not. I mean, my thought would be um, the designee could even be a member of the public and not be staff or a member of the commission. So right. for the yeah. next step, I think it could be historical commission designee and staff. And staff. Yeah. I think that's and, yeah. and that way, you know, I. My only thought too would be at some point, what if you know the commission and staff disagree about how to determine significance, or if there's you know, at least now there may be a way to balance different interpretations of the. Well, I think also the idea was to stre streamline it so that not every application went to the full commission. Mm -hmm. right. There be some yeah. initial initial evaluation of. To what extent it, it met mm -hmm. the demolition bylaw? It kind yeah, of a review process, right? You know, and if and if there is a disagreement, then that's a perfect instance of it comes to the whole commission. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think the the right now this should say the historical commission designee and town staff will or shall determine if a building is. Um, you know, a significant building, right? I mean, that's really all that's happening right now. Right, yeah. If the application concerns a significant building. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. As defined in this bylaw? Yeah. yeah. The, the application, Ben. Yeah. 
and I think um, what Jane said is good. If there's disagreement or if if, if it um, or you know something to that effect, then it go you know then it proceeds to a hearing, right? If there is no if there is no consensus or agreement, then it goes to a hearing. Right. So I think there are, there are criteria. Just say as below. defined in this bylaw, like you did before, as okay. defined in this bylaw. Yeah. Just keep using the same thing. Uh, so um, another clarification: uh, Do we want? I don't know. Like, do we want there to be like? Or I guess yeah. yeah it makes sense to have like three people as like historical commission and town staff so that there can be um like a quote unquote majority or if it's like two people and they disagree i guess it just goes to the historical to commission. commission i don't think you need to give a number here because this is okay. a long-term thing we don't want yeah. to change things too much that's true yeah what are we doing about business days we've got five days already before it gets to this group and then how much on this group? And then the commission, how many days do we have to get this thing through? Um, sorry. I'm just I think they changed it to like 45 business days before it comes to the, within, for the commission, because it seemed like Probably for a while there, we were running into some weird situations where we couldn't meet fast enough to review some of the applications. Yeah. And I know Robin and I talked and we were like, we don't want, we don't want some of those to fall through the cracks on that, on that particular technicality. And so we switched it from 30 to 45 days to give us that extra little wiggle room without making it like an absurd way for the person who's applying. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think if we could back it up though, I, let's, let's see if we can actually do it in 45 so if, if Rob has five business days or the building commissioner has five business days for that first step, then this next step with this um, to determine significance, we should right, have a time limit and then also say if there's disagreement, then it goes to a hearing. But Jan, to your point, I mean, we say uh, seven, you know, what, right, how many business days, uh, you know, my thought is on this, on this uh, well, on this step, though, for instance, what if, although it's a complete application, what if um, staff or the commission wants to, you know, the commission's designee wants to do more research on the structure? You know, what if, you know, we just need to do a little more digging? Um, right. We're not getting together, right? You're just emailing this thing out. And I mean, how long does it take to do research? If you're busy one day, you can do it in the next, or you hand it on to somebody else in the commission as the designee. I think five business days is plenty. Sure. I just, yeah, yeah, I think we, we run the risk if we make it any longer than that, then it's it's easier to put off. Whereas I think, I mean, we want to keep the process moving forward so that it's right. it's clear cut and straightforward. Um, but we yes. also want to make sure that we're having time to do our due diligence. And so I feel like five business days seems perfectly appropriate. All right. So we've got 10 days then. Yeah, I mean, ostensibly staff would know when an application comes in, you can start doing research then. So that you know you have a little more time than just the five. I could share that with the designee, and then I would because this is all following one thing to another. I would put um, mission designee and town staff sh shall then within another five business days. So okay. we it's clear it's not the same ones. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So within then. Another. So before five, write another. Before five. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Uh, stepping back from this just a bit, um, so this kind of funnel will probably eliminate that don't need to come to the Historical Commission. So if we're sort of reducing the flow to the Historical Commission full to, to a public hearing, then for those that do come through, 45 days seems to me like a like kind of the outer limit of what is reasonable and fair to uh, private homeowners. Um, yeah, so the, the, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, so the planning board and, you know, zoning board, they have 65 days. Oh, do they? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
So, so you know, I, I mean, my thought is if, if we're saying 45 business days from the time of application, you know, the difficulty is then, you know, pulling the commission members, we need two and a half weeks to get a legal ad out or whatever it is. Um, Shouldn't the 45 days start after, after it's gone through the building commissioner and it's, and then the historical commission designee? Because if we're trying to do a public hearing, if we haven't even determined whether or not it fits the criteria for a public hearing, to me, the 45 business days doesn't start until after that original 10 business days where well, everything is determined. That's right? the question. I kind of like that. Yeah, but that's not allowing for the fact that somebody wants to do this and they've got a contractor sitting there waiting. You're now making it 55 business days. Right. You know what I mean? I think, I think if you need, realistically, you need three weeks, say, to schedule a hearing, three to four weeks. So, I mean, you could say 20, I mean, you could say 25 business days after this. So, if you already had two weeks and then you have another five weeks to hold a hearing, that's okay. 25 business days. Yeah. I don't think we need. I don't think we need forty-five business days to hold the hearing. That's that's nine. That's nine weeks. So are we okay? So are we back to forty-five business days for the total for the whole process? Well, I think. What if we change it back to 30, 30 business days for the public hearing, but the thirty business days doesn't start until after that? So I think. I like, the way I like this is written is it's a successive number of days and it's not confusing. So the way the bylaws is written now, there's 35, there's 45, and then no one knows is it from the time of application, from what step. So I think if we write, you know, five business days, the building commissioner has five business days, then there's five more business days to determine significance. And after that, there's X number of business days. And so it's just like you follow the steps and it's not right. from time of application, it's each step in the process. So we're not trying to actually figure out how many days that is. It's you know, so if, uh, would, you, if, would, would you recommend 30 days after those first two steps then, Nate? Yeah, we could say, so what is that? That's, um, that's 30 business days, it's that's six, six weeks. weeks. Yeah. So it's, yeah, all it together. Could, should it just be 30 days then? So like 10, <laughs> 10 business days, but then 30 days after no, that? Business days, or it gets confusing. You know, do, we say oh, 20, sure. do we say 20 business days? That's four weeks. That's right. fine. The, the, what's happened to us before is it's come in right after we've had a meeting. Right. And we needed a month to be able to pull another meeting together. Right. So 20 business days gives us that. So um, I just want to, uh, I need to like, work on this wording a little bit. Um, a public hearing shall be held by the full commission, something. Yeah. Okay. They'll be held by the historical commission, right? Okay. Within 20 business days. Yeah. Within 20 business days following the determination of significance? Yeah. Right. We need to and make it, it's passive, make it active. Yeah. The commission will ha hold a public hearing for buildings to be found significant. Within 20 business days. Yep. Yeah. For buildings found to be significant. Yeah. Or, uh, within 20 business days of the, you know, finding of significance or something. No, we'll just say then again somewhere in yeah. here. I, I would put right there where you have your cursor after public hearing. That's where for buildings found to be significant should go. Yeah. Yeah. Within a further 20 business days. Okay. Or what did I say up here within another 20 business days? Um, okay, period. That's it, yeah. Well, to determine no, whether. No, no, that's. That's it. Take the rest of that stuff out. Yeah. This is going to be such a great bylaw. It is. Of course, it won't go into effect till you and I are. Yeah. <laughs> well, just, just to clarify, 
to the town. <laughs> Do we have to de define why, what this public hearing is all about? Like, to, de to determine whether the building should be public, uh, preferably preserved? Um, That'll happen further down. No, go back up. Public hearing, I think, is the fine term. No, it isn't. Oh, could it be? Hearing. Hearing is. Go back hearing. down then. Sorry, hearing. So hearing. it should be public hearing. It's not, it's, this is an, this, unless, you know. Yeah, that should just say public hearing. Yeah. And, and then, then capitalize it in the thing yeah. we just wrote. Oh, yeah. But we need to change, but we need to change the definition. No, we don't. Uh, yeah. Because we would already have. Right determined its significance. I think the public hearing of the commission held for the purpose of determining if a significant building should be preferably preserved. Yeah. Oh, Good. I, just don't, I just don't want to box ourselves in because we might need a public hearing to, if there's disagreement about the significance. No, 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 that, uh, um, no, put what Nate said. It covers, it'll cover everything eventually. Trust us. Well, except if there is a disagreement among the staff and designee. Yeah. Well, that's, but that's part of the public hearing. Oh, I see what you mean. It won't have been determined. Uh, so, so that needs to be uh, after historically significant building. If it's determined, it's eligible building. Um, that's not eligible uh, anymore. Uh, Isn't that? Uh, 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 and then, then um, what did we just say? For the purpose of determining preservation preservation and for the purpose of determining preservation? Whether a significant building should be preferably preserved. Right. A, okay, a significant building shall be preferably preserved. Be. Yeah. And so the, is a historically significant building fits out? Yeah. yeah. Then jump to in accordance. Yeah. Um, so for wonky for wonky word uh, folks, is is this an if or a whether? For the yeah weather. weather weather <laughs> that was easy. Now, I was always taught not to include the the definition or the word you're defining in the definition. Oh, I don't know. When, when I was in elementary school, <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I was told to actually put it in. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> public hearing needs to be caps. Yeah. yeah. And then it shall, it's not shall be preferably preserved. It, it should be or, or. Will, will be in that case. I you guess. determine whether it should be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Determine whether it, yeah. It should. Good, yeah. So what is it in accordance with? We, we, I guess we don't need that. But yeah. How about? Well, we have some something here. The, no, yes, we do. Yeah. I would just take the rest of it out because. No, that's we true. Do. We don't. It's all in there. Um, the and then what about what you said, Jane, if there's a disagreement at making, determining that it's right. significant building, should we say, or if staff and historical commission designee cannot determine whether it is a significant building have not determined yeah think? yeah so there's a sec sort of a second question there about procedure and that is <clears throat> if we are if we're comfortable uh determining significance and and preferable preservation in the same meeting or if we think again we have to do it as two steps why should that be public? If a designee and the staff can't decide, then it comes to commission, but it doesn't have to be public yet. It could just be a meeting, that's, right? That's the question, but it does, it would then uh, drag out the timeline. Yeah, that's uh, true. So. Yeah, no, I think, right, I think, no, Jane, I, I understand what you're saying, but I agree. I think the public hearing should only be to determine if it's properly preserved, right? That way there's no, yeah. That way that stays clear. And um, the question is then how does the commission determine if it's significant, right? Is that? Right. Uh, is there a, yeah, I, so I completely understand that. Is there a 
kind of a, t a technical workaround if we want to? Yeah, we could just say that if staff and the a historical commission designee do not agree, historical commission designees words stands. But I think I think right now, just leave it the way it is. A public hearing is only held to if a building is already found to be significant, and then the public hearing is really about whether it should be properly preserved. Yeah, but I'm thinking back down to what we were working on before we went back to the definitions. I think yeah. So if we went back down there, we'd have to then write in a step. So the step would be that 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 um, the historical commission will hold a public hearing found to be significant within 20 business days, but there's a step in between there. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there's that, disagreement, the commission shall meet, right, we have to say meet, you know, right. Right, the historical commission will meet to, to um, make the decision as to the significance of the building. You know, I think this is so unlikely that, that, um, you know, calling a kind of urgent commission meeting and sort of sticking to the timeline for a public hearing, I think that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. I, you know, if we have to say, oh, well, let's, we have to meet, uh, you know, like we don't in, have to get in, together in person anymore, we can have it happen quickly with this kind of right model that we're using right now. Nate, what's your feeling about the, the legality of this continuing beyond the end of the COVID phases? I think what I've heard is that if, if, the, if the state, um, you know, we're allowed to do remote participation because of, you know, the executive orders and COVID, but right. it may be that after this, you know, this, you know, that's retracted and it's no longer, uh, you know, permissible to have a remote meeting. So. My thought is, you know, the, I, I agree if there's disagreement, um, but say we, if we keep it within this short time frame, what if all of a sudden you can't get a quorum in person and it's hard to determine, you know, then you can't determine the significance. Um, yeah, I, I, you know. Well, isn't there a provision for- An emergency? Uh, for, yeah, for a member absence to, to phone in. I thought, I thought that was part of, I mean, sort of back in the town meeting days, I, I remember that for some committee participation, that was permitted. You mean if we're meeting in person and we don't have a quorum, somebody can phone in? Yeah, remote participation is still allowed. Yes, so that would be, but the, the thought is that I think the way that worked, you know, pre-COVID was you still needed a quorum in, uh, of the members and uh, the person calling in couldn't be the quorum getting member. You had to have a physical quorum. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, so I just, yeah, and, um, I mean, Jane, I get you also said it may be very rare. I mean, do we just not even, um, do we not even mention this? Is this not even, is this getting too detailed? What if, what if we just say that if there's a disagreement, then it automatically moves to a public hearing? Because we're not determining significance at the public hearing. We're only determining preferably preserved. Oh, sure. I'm just thinking like, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> Could we say like, uh, like, you know, the it, chair, the chair can determine. Know, people will vote and the, and the majority wins. I mean, unless there's only two people and they're at law, it seems like maybe we could just say um, designee and town staff and say something about having an odd number of people or something, and then you don't have to worry about it, you know? I think, I think by, by, by introducing the idea that if there was a, a difficulty in making a decision that the chair of the historical commission's vote would be the tiebreaker. I think that's a good solution. What if this designee is the chair? Yeah. <laughs> well, then, then that designee, then, 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 then that stands. Then their their right. opinion stands. Or you could bring in the co-chair to be the tiebreaker. I mean, not the co-chair, the vice chair. What do we say if there's disagreement? The a second historical commission designee would be used or something. Be. Yeah. 
would be enlisted to um, move the decision. Right. <laughs> That's the, I mean, something along that line to me seems much simpler than holding a meeting and holding a meeting. I mean, I'm, my one, my question is if there is disagreement, that would imply that there is some uncertain, some uncertainty whether the building is significant and maybe it should just automatically trigger the public hearing for preferably preserved. Or if there's disagreement, the building should be considered, shall be considered significant. Right, like we did with the age. If you don't yeah. know the age, we'll consider it. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that's, that's an excellent point. solution. Yeah, yeah. That's a breakthrough, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we talked yeah. through it. Yeah. Good idea. You're thinking, Capon. Here it is, 8.04, and you're still thinking. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm fresh out of grad <laughs> school. Where I was... The building, capital B, shall be determined. To be significant. No, but, well, no, the... Sorry, the application. Price, let's say, um, if there is disagreement... The application shall be forwarded to the... No, we have to call it, it will be determined to be a significant building or something. We have to say it's a significant building. Yeah. The, the building will, will be determined to be significant and forwarded well, to the next. The definition term, which is significant building, right? Yeah. Yeah, so determined to be a significant building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And we'll move to public hearing. Or the application will be determined to concern a significant building. So we have to say building twice. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. The application will be, go back to the word building, take that out right there where your cursor is. Yeah, the application. Will be. Cool. Yeah. Oh, like it is in the previous sentence. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah that's because I said that part too. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting mine. Uh, this is the Jen Marquardt signature. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should. It's the procedures for savings and loans now. It's all starting to come back. I feel like Jan needs to have control of the editing for this. Poor Ben can't keep up. Poor Ben can't keep up with all the changes. <laughs> Let me, let me quickly take a time check since it is uh, six past eight. Um, this is, I feel, a like tremendous breakthrough. This this little section here. Uh, but how how much longer do you all feel like you can? Think? Before we do anything, Ben, could you hit save? <laughs> yeah, good idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to go watch the Zoom meeting again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think, yeah, Jane, I, I think we're getting um, getting on in the hours. I'd just like to preview the next section of the bylaw just to see where we are, because um, the, uh, it, yeah, okay, exemptions. I, you know, I love it that I think these exemptions are great. Um, is this, is this where they, do we need to finish up procedures before introducing the exemptions? What, um, I guess that is the question. What would we say after, if we went back up after the public hearing part? I mean, I think that's kind of the, that's the end of it for now, right? I mean, this is, this is the basic outline of how an application proceeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't need any of that below 20 right. business days. Yeah. We need to then, um, I'm wondering how we get from the public hearing then to the final disposition of things. So should exemptions be a sub uh, a sub category of this part of procedures? Would we say, sorry, just in this in this section, would we say one more sentence? Um, something about like, you know, a, after, you know, a, if, if during a public hearing of buildings, a significant buildings found to be preferably preserved, uh, you know, a, a and there's delay. language below we can pull up for that. Yeah, okay. Already been, yeah. Not even done, all right. So we get all the way through procedures and then we have exemptions. Exemptions. Okay. I yeah, scroll up, Ben, uh, up, scroll up one more. I just wanna see where we, how the bylaw is structured if we. Oh, up, sorry, yeah, there's the kind of table contents up here. Although, I guess 
Yeah, the exemptions are a sub a subheading. Yeah. So yeah, um, we don't have a, we don't have appointments and powers, do we? No. Oh, Where there is it is. Exemptions yeah. in there. I don't see it. So no exemptions is I guess a subheading. Yeah, thirteen point three one. And, and we've got kind of a stray sentence there that we were adding to the first. Oh, good. Okay. The application meets the definition. Of, I don't think we need that anymore. Yeah, because that's right up here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that whole on the black building commissioner, all that, none of that's needed. Yeah. So I, I think it, from my perspective, it would be helpful for me to get a copy of the changes that we made and kind of read through them and make sure that they're consistent and then to kind of preview the exemptions. And we all have some idea of what changes we think should be made there, if any, okay. at, another, at another meeting. Wait. Yeah. Before we get to that, we need to do what Nate just suggested, which is the next, there's a, a paragraph return, and then we say, if at the public meeting, the building is determined to be preferably preserved, and then we fill in the, the wording from below about... Um, like a public hurting, then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is determined to be preferably preserved. Oh, I'm just itching to do the typing. Yeah. Um, then there's language below about um, the demolition permit being granted or rejected. Okay. So we'll just move that up. There, it's in this section. Yeah. There you go. And the public uh, procedure. This one? Yeah. Maybe that whole procedure needs to be moved up under the public hearing thing. It depends on what we have for our table of contents, which we can't see at this point. Because we're saying that, you know, within so many days, we notify the applicant. And then, you know, I, if we're writing our this process right, it would just follow there. Yeah, yeah all of this it, should be part of that, because that's what you've started up there, right, is procedure. Yeah. Yes, all of these A through F or whatever. Okay, so yeah, this includes like. Uh, right. MGL, I think. And we're gonna we're gonna edit all this because I think we want to get rid of the MGL references, right? We do. Yeah, it needs to be edited, but we just moving where it comes. I would say that after that that paragraph that we wrote about holding a public hearing, we should say something like, "For the purposes of a public hearing, colon, and then all of these letters." Right, right, and then edit these accordingly, and then right. edit these next time. Yeah. So yeah, this all moves up above exemptions. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, but add in something to to set up the uh, um the way that we're going to place these there. Yeah, and it's going to get really ugly and track changes. So yeah, but so uh, above exemptions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not, uh, Keep going. Keep going back up to where we were writing. Yeah. Now go go go. Okay, where you started, if at a public hearing, yeah, just put instead for the purposes of a public hearing, colon or something, and then and then all those things will happen. We'll rewrite them as we go. Okay. It shows where they're going to appear, so we know our placement. Yeah, you know that's a nice logical flow to that, so we're not jumping around within the sections of the bylaw. Right. To understand right. the the flow, so this this is really. Because you scroll up, Ben, what is this right. section called? This is called uh, Procedure for Obtaining a Demolition Permit. Yeah, so the, the public hearing to me is a subsection of the whole process. It's not its own right. section. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good. Yep. Okay. Yep. So and it's then I, 3, 3, 3. it should be 331, right? Unless we've lost one and two in there. Yeah. I think I we just restructured it so it'd be. Well, and we might have deleted most of the yeah, three, probably three, actually one. deleted them. Probably some of these are one and two. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think the I feel like three one might have been all the bullet points we decided to just scrap and turn it into one paragraph. So I think we're fine to just change that to three one. Mm -hmm. Well, we can always add them back in later if we want to. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like I'm less. It's more. 
it's probably more important at this point that we get all of our wording down and then we can make it look pretty later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What else? So is, are we, is that, is that a good, I mean, instead of group editing this public hearing procedure up to now, uh, can we just let it rest there and come back to that? Yep. Okay. David. <laughs> should, should we make a motion to to take a break from working on the preser preservation bylaws? No, it just falls from meeting to meeting. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, I don't know if we need to, if we no, want no, to we, we can, close this out for today or. We continue the work on the bylaws at the next scheduled meeting. Yeah. Perfect. We'll need a motion. So I think for the next meeting, yeah, we could talk about, you know, Ben, we can clean this up and send it around. I think, you know, consider what you think is a good public hearing procedure. So right now, uh, you know, we don't necessarily want to mention the zoning bylaw or 40A, that's zoning. So we can write our own procedure. So. If we think it should be, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, how we notify the owners, you know, it, it could be pretty simple. Um, Good. Cool. Okay. And then exemptions, right? I think it'd be nice to go through those. I, 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 I like the idea of having exemptions, um, yeah. you know, at the next time, but I think I like them because then you know, it just clarifies a few things. So if we, I don't know if we like the, what we're yeah, putting. Yeah, it'd be like thirteen point three two would then be exemptions to a public hearing right right well, this is exemptions for even the building commissioner forwarding it to the designee if, if these alterations don't meet the definition of demolition right right that's true is that what these are yes probably has okay. to go back further up then okay mm -hmm. I think yeah, you'd say, significant alterations would change to demolition. I mm -hmm. think you would not. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to go back up where the designee and the building commissioner are determining mm -hmm. significance. Or we can just reference like these list of exemptions. Yeah. Or something. Maybe they should go in definitions. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. We'll play with it, Ben, and send us a, a relatively clean copy and then um, make a clear note where we haven't worked so we can. Okay. We yeah. can give that part some thought for the next time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the exemptions are interesting. They're really, it's like most of it is replacement with similar or like material and it lists, you know, what all of that is. And so. Yeah, this was, um, this was Rob's three simple, mm -hmm. uh, exemptions and it kind of just says removal of the architect or replacement of architectural features that replicate significant design detail with exact material so it kind of covers a lot of yeah this. it might be better to do something like that but, yeah i mean it would be like we're saying i mean we're saying windows and then we were, we're really it's really repetitive and then we're saying siding stairs balcony but we're saying with the same or similar material so you know if there's a way to have that same or similar material and then maybe bullet point those elements which could be replaced like the root you know i think there's a probably a different way to do this but mm -hmm. i would really love a copy of um well i guess i can print something from this but like um pat i i, I feel the need to kind of read something you know in a very old-fashioned way um I, i'm i'm not saying very much i am listening but you know i've only really been involved for about a year and i'm still feeling my way in terms of mm -hmm. the steps and the processes and what we're you know what each bit resolves or reveals or you know so i i really feel like i need some kind of um time just to sort of read it you know, rather than analyzing any more at this point, my brain is pretty, pretty mushy. It's, you know, if you've got up at six, that's, that's how things are. Yeah. <laughs> I move we adjourn and I'll pour a glass of wine at our own. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? We can't have a, we can't have a Zoom wine meeting? 
<laughs> we could, but it can't be on on town on a town site. So we'll have, I'll just right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if that's serious, a motion to adjourn can't be debated. Although I, know I, I just want to the public. There is one member of the public here, and we public comment is usually the last item on the agenda. So I just want to make sure we're not. Oh, okay. And then we have to determine our next meeting date too. Right. So before accepting the uh, meeting, I'll uh, open the, the meeting to public comment. So if there's any member of the public who wishes to comment, please uh, please do say so. I don't see any hands raised, so. Okay, then. Uh, so, um, entertaining the motion to adjourn. Uh, well, we have to do the next meeting date. Uh, yeah, we need our next meeting date. Okay, you want to go for a month? What's our regular schedule? Is it the third Wednesday? It's yeah, and the we, third Wednesday. Yeah, so that would be the 16th. Yeah. Okay. Does that work in general? Hey, how does that work with the uh, CPA like applications? Is that cutting it too close to? No, they're not due until, um, they, I said mid-October, so my thought is if the commission meets on the 16th, we can discuss CPA proposals. And if we need to meet, you know, earlier in October, just to finalize a CPA proposal, we could, but usually. Um, Would it be better if we met on the 23rd to give us a little more time about the CPA and maybe? No, no I think better I discussion think we, I, think discuss, I think we need to discuss it earlier. And then if we need to meet again, yeah. and have a, a truncated meeting yeah. just for CPA. Okay. Okay. Uh, but James, will you be available then? Jane Shuffler, you have no idea, right? I mean, according to the doctor, they're not letting me out anytime soon, so I'll probably be in the same room. Okay. Jane Wald, what about you and your schedule? Yeah, that should work for you. Okay. okay. So we'll say September 16th then at 6. We'll just. Yep. All right. Yep. Great. And it will, yeah, just, just for everyone to know, we had a town hall update today. And more than likely, the Zoom will go through the year, the calendar year. So we're, you know, I don't anticipate in-person meetings through this calendar year. No. All right. Whether or, we, whether or not we like Zoom, that's just what we'll be doing. Well, is there a second? Well, that's helpful. I was going to say that's helpful because if yeah. with COVID, I may not be able to make it back to Massachusetts until January. <laughs> 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 and you, you got the time difference in your favor too <laughs> I know it's still sunny here not that I have a good view but it's still sunny <laughs> well you can see what it is here because I'm outside I know I can almost not see you anymore Jan <laughs> the sun is going down earlier and earlier okay well it was lovely is seeing you is all there a, is there a second so, I second who moved who did the first move I did, of course. I'm always the one who talks too much. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll call vote for, a, for an adjournment. No. No, we, we'll, no, I'm just relying on uh, nobody to say anything when I say any opposed. Yeah. Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion carried. We're adjourned. Have okay, a good day. Bye. All right.